Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Rigati Gashagwa, um, Your Excellency's colleague governors, cabinet secretaries present, majority leader of the Senate, senators present, uh, members of the National Assembly, principal secretaries present, the DIG, the Rift Valley Regional Commissioner, um, all the, everyone from the administrations, uh, heads of state agencies present, government officials, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor to join you today as we come together as leaders of the region to discuss the causes, impact, and possible solutions to the menace of illicit brews, drugs, and substance abuse in the Rift Valley region. Um, at the onset, allow me to welcome you to Nakuru County, the home of unlimited opportunities. It is an honor and privilege that Nakuru City was selected to host this event here at the ASK showground. You are all very welcome. Your Excellencies, Your Excellency the Deputy President, the conversation on the danger posed by the consumption of illicit brews, use of drugs and substance abuse in our country and more so in the Rift Valley is timely. Various studies in this topic branded in Nakuru County as the business of death have shown the use of illicit brews, drugs and substance abuse among the youth and now some older people does not only pose a challenge to our social, economic, political and health progress, but also threaten local and national peace and security. Therefore, it is an evolving challenge that all players at the national and county levels must fold their sleeves and tackle to avoid the, le the lethal consequences of this menace. Indeed, illicit alcohol and substance abuse among youth affect not only the individual users and abusers, but also their families and society. These effects include neglect of responsibilities, increased trends in criminal activities, including organized criminal gangs, violent crimes, and international drug trafficking, interpersonal violence, diminished attachment to family and others, impaired self-regulation and problem solving, uh, decreased development of prosocial attitudes and behavior and health impairment, including mental disorders, reduced life expectancy among the users and abusers. In addition, studies show a death rate of 2.5 times higher than normal among users and abusers. These rates are highest among young adults aged 18 to 35. Youth in this age bracket constitute about 60% of Kenya's national population, hence being the most vulnerable group. Allow me to demonstrate how deep um, this malaise has become ingrained in our society here in Akuru County. Sometime in September last year, a 30-year-old resident of El Bagon in Molo sub-county, serving as an assistant county commissioner in Vihiga, took a short leave to visit his family in Akuru. With some free time, he went on a night-long drinking spree with his friends in Molo, and sadly, he died the following day from alcohol poisoning ending a promising administrator's life and leaving behind a young widow and children, orphaned at a very young age. On August 8th of 2021, 10 people in the Hodi Hodi area of Bahati sub-county died after consuming what tests confirmed to be poisoned illicit liquor. Another six people died four months later in December 2021 after consuming illicit brew in Jawado village, Joro sub-county. Similar deaths arising from illicit brew consumption have been recorded in Molo, Kuresoi South, and Kuresoi North sub-counties. Where deaths have not been reported, you will find once able-bodied youths have, be, have been turned into zombies after using drugs and abusing substances that are now easily available in urban centers and villages. Your Excellency, uh, investigations and studies reveal that the purveyors of this menace have devised ways to continue their deadly business under the noses of administrators and security agents. The merchants of this business in Molo, Joro, Bahati, Kuresoi North, Kuresoi 
uh, South Gilgil and parts of Nakuru City have become so enterprising that they conduct their businesses in toilets and even in cemeteries to escape the prying eyes of security officers and administrators. Informal settlements in urban centers in the county have become dense where these merchants conduct their businesses, exacerbating the sorry state that already exists in those areas. In Nakuru City, areas of Kaptemboa, Kivumbini, Kuaronda, Canyon, London, Morogi, and other densely populated slums have become stomping grounds for peddlers of drugs and merchants of illicit brews. Efforts to stamp out this menace must begin in these areas. To stem the spread of the malaise, which is morphing into a security threat at the national and county levels, all players, political leaders, security agencies, the clergy, and the relevant state agencies must work together. It is evident that weak laws, regulations, and law fines have largely contributed to the state we are in regarding illicit brew consumption. As a region, we must develop strong legislation that provides punitive consequences for peddlers of drugs and merchants of illicit brews. Um, in here in Nakuru County, we are preparing a law to this effect. We will seek the support of the national administration of the national government and security teams in the county in the fight against these illicit brews and use of drugs. In the meantime, we have tightened the issuance of licenses to bars and wines and spirits outlets. This year, out of 3,654 application, applications, applications, licenses were issued to 2,919. 445 were rejected. We want to guard and ring fence our youths from illicit brews and the use of drugs. In conclusion, I want to thank the national government for identifying the dangers of this menace and bringing us together to discuss and find ways of containing the spread of illicit brews and the use of drugs. This is a fight that we cannot wish away because the consequences are worse. In fighting against this business of death, we seek to reduce poverty, unite families, mold a healthy workforce, clean our politics, entrench harmony and peace in our society and promote security. I'm convinced that we will have a clear route to tackle this challenge by the time we leave here today. So thank you very much, Your Excellency, for leading this fight. It is no easy task, but I'm sure you and all of us together are up to the task. It is now my pleasure to introduce um, Your Excellencies, my colleague governors, and um, we have Dr. Mutai, who is the governor of Kericho, and you will have time to speak during the plenary. Um, we have uh, Jonathan B. or Kotimoja from Uasingishu. We have Hilary Barchok from Bomet. Thank you. We have Benjamin Cheboy, my neighbor from Baringo, who stole my flam flamingos, but they are back. We have Patrick Ntutu from Narok. We have Governor Irongo from Laikipia. We have Deputy Governor Yulita Mitei from Nandi County. Am I, have I left out any present governor? Let me also take the time to introduce my deputy governor, or the deputy governor of Nakuru County, DG Kones Asante. I also noticed on the screen there that I saw the majority leader of the Nakuru County Assembly and any MCAs, if you also can stand up, I think that would be nice. Thank you very much. Asanteni, thank you very much. Oh, they are from other areas also. Oh, okay, all the MCAs, stand up. Sorry, I didn't realize that. No, we did, Linda. <laughs> okay, thank you very, very much. And for you, the members of the, is it the press? Mumeniona? Nikosawa? You are Muripot Pia. Thank you, Governor. <laughs> now, I want us to, to move straight into a presentation by Madam Eunice uh, Rubia. Eunice. 
Now, as, as Eunice comes on stage, I want to once again acknowledge the heads of various agencies present here. Uh, maybe you could just stand up so that uh, you wave to the delegation here, the delegates. So I can recognize two, of course, the head of uh, NACADA, uh, acting uh, CEO, Mr. Muteti. Then there is the acting Commissioner General Kare, uh, Madam Rispa. Yeah. Anti-counterfeit agency, thank you. 